All right, Pirate fans, welcome out to another episode of the uh, PC Podcast, the Pirates Code Podcast. Um, I've got, uh, I don't have the full crew in effect. One, I had uh, a prior commitment, may be able to join us to coach. He may be able to come in here in a few minutes. He may not. Uh, he had a commitment he had to attend. Um, and so we're hoping he'll come on, but uh, he might not be able to to make it, uh, but I do got uh, the other two uh, here with me, uh, and of course, every Wednesday uh, we'll be breaking down and previewing our games from our uh, football team and, and our volleyball team. And so, we're going to start off uh, this evening by talking about uh, our uh, football team. Uh, and so, I'm still feeling a little under the weather. Um, and I'm still taking a lot of medication too, so. Uh, I'm going to pass it over to um, Tony, and he's going to kind of guide us uh, through uh, the kind of like the agenda that we have. And so, so, Tony, go ahead and take it away. All right. So tonight uh, we're going to talk. We're going to break down uh, week number one, uh, Rockport versus AP. And then we're going to get into uh, our uh, what our predictions are. Our, our uh, uh, week two versus uh, King. The Rockport versus CC King. We'll talk about that one next. But first, we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and break down Week One, Rockport Fulton versus Aransas Pass. And uh, Johnny, what are your thoughts on the game? What What did you see in the offense? Talk about offense first. What did, What did you see on the offense? What did you like about the offense? The offense, I like the way they uh, they pretty well manhandled the the, the ground game. I mean, uh, it wasn't just a John Chupi show. It was the whole team show. I mean. These linemen just open up some huge holes, you know. And as long as you get back past that defensive line, man, it, it's it's show both time after that. And uh, Ace, man, Ace, Ace was all over the place. Uh, I like his the way he scrambles and lets go of the ball. You know, it, it gives those defensive backs, you know, to think twice. You know, do I go after him or I stay with the receivers? And I think he caused all those little defensive backs, you know, pretty well flat footed. And uh, that's that's the threat we have, you know. And that, that's one thing. It, you know, and I like the way it, I, I would sit, consider that we were running up the score. But it was nice to come out in the third quarter and just work on that pass and see what we can do just to have that 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 game situation thing and stuff like that. You know, um, but, you know, it's it, it was a great it was great uh, overall, just overall effort on the offensive side. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, Gabriel, what, do you have any anything you want to add to that? Yeah, I, offensively, I think this helps out John Chupi tremendously. I mean, he's off, obviously the featured back, right? He's a guy that's going to get the, the, the carries, the most carries pretty much in every game. You know, and maybe Coach Seibert will change it up a little bit here and there. But for the most part, he's, he, he's the go-to guy. And uh, I think with uh, Devin Phillips, you know, c coming up and and because and Devin in the scrimmages and to me and then um, – this game against Randis has really been running the ball well, but we already knew he could do that from what he did last year when he had to. And then we got Kennedy, you know, and, and, and really Luke hasn't even ran the ball, really. Uh, it's a guy that, you know, we, you know, uh, saw run the ball a lot last year. He really hasn't even gotten into the mix. So this is a very scary, you know, team running the ball. Um, so I think with the guys like Luke, uh, Devin, uh, uh, Caden, you know, these guys really open it up for John because now it becomes okay, who are we going to get? You focus on 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 John, and now you got Devin, you got to worry about on the other side, you know. Now you got, and to me, Caden Kennedy is more of a power runner, so he's not your speedster, right? He's not, he's not, he's not John Chupi is going to break it you know, down the sideline and stuff. He's not a okay, well, I'm gonna, you know, juke you, he, he's gonna run over you, but that's the kind of power that I think Rockport needs to not, not definitely not a Ryan Wells, right. But man, this kid can play. He plays with a lot of heart. Uh, and, uh, and I think as the season goes and, and hopefully he stays healthy, he's going to be a big part of, of our run game simply because of what he's been able to do so far. So I like what we're doing on the run and, and the way we're just, we're just, you know, giving that ball to, to different people. We didn't think at the beginning of the season, we weren't talking about this. We didn't think this was going to happen, right? We saw a couple of changes in scrimmage. 
than we saw week one. And all of a sudden, we're like, wait, wait, this is this is totally different. Man. Everybody's getting a piece of the pie, right? So you don't have one guy that's running and getting 200 yards. But you got multiple guys getting 50, 60, 70 yards, which adds up, right? So to me, I like it better, you know, giving it to everybody. I think it keeps John Chupi fresh, really, and because and, it's a long season. Um, and so the more that, you know, in these games that, you know, he don't get these carries, and I know John wants to get the carries right, but there's going to be games where we're going to need him. Uh, it keeps him fresh. And, and I think that's going to help Rockport, you know, into the district. And I think it's also going to help us uh, in, in the playoffs. And so, you know, the, the run game has always been the force. Now the pass, I said last year, when the pass really gets going, this team is really going to get dangerous. Because, I mean, we were – Getting into the second, third round, we're just basically a run game. Now you add the pass game, uh, and, and Ace is you know out of the pocket. To me, he's better out of the pocket. When he gets out of the pocket, is when he's more dangerous than when he's in the pocket because he's then. I mean, he can throw it down. He's pretty accurate when he's running and throwing. Um, you know, if he feels you give him the option, to, if he sees it, oh, he can run, he can throw. So. There's multiple ways this year, I think, early on in the season that you're going to see the Rockport can score, and I think it makes it very, very dangerous. So I was very pleased uh, with Rockport's performance uh, on Friday, um, and I think they're only going to get better, Tony. I, I think I, this team is only going to get better. I think Ace is going to continue to grow uh, in the next couple of games and into the district. Um, and as long as we stay healthy, man, watch out. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I think that, you know, Cyber did a really good job of distributing the ball uh, with all of the guys, you know, getting a feel for what they can do. Uh, and, and I think they all did. I think they all did good, you know, and, and the offensive line, you know, they they, you know, like you're right on. I mean, they opened up some big holes and, and you know, I saw a lot of a lot of pulling and lead blocking and blocking downfield and, and, and just just executing. You know, this is a game where you know you're going to go in probably i mean probably if i if i'm rockport i'm i'm, I'm thinking i'm going to go in this game I'm, I'm i'm probably going to win you know but but it's not about going in there and just winning but it's going in there and and seeing where your interchangeable parts are you know who can i put in on what down you know can can i put kennedy in where john is and can he do the same thing can i put devin in where you know uh you know where ryan was last year and and, and you know uh, and, and he got to see that, you know, he did that with, the, you know, Robbins did that with the defense. You know, I saw different linebackers go in, you know, Carson gets hurt early in the game. You know, he, he throws another safety in the backfield. And I mean, you just, this is a game where they, where they were, where they were able to do that, you know, who can do what. And, and I think that was a, it was a good showing that, that Rockport is, uh, has a lot of depth on offense. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, the, the mm -hmm. offensive line, same thing, you know, there were some, some different guys going in and out and, you know, uh, Ace throwing the ball, you know, throwing the ball well. I mean, he was throwing, he was throwing some dimes, you know what I mean, right on, uh, and on the run. So, you know, those are the things that we talked about early on this summer when we started the the Pirate Cove uh, on the when we started talking about football. You know, this is what's gonna take Rockport deeper is is getting this getting this pass and and absolutely you're absolutely right with with uh really confusing other teams you know if they try to watch film they're like oh you know you know i, I know john i know choopy's supposed to be getting the ball but you know devin and kennedy and, and 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 you know who are all these guys you know what i mean and then you got christian kane you know can't even forget about him he scored two touchdowns you know what i mean so uh they're just just you know there's so many weapons that it's it's going to be hard i think it's going to make it hard for teams to prepare for and I think I, I, I like that. And, and, you know, I, I know, I know like uh, John wants those touches. I know he wants those touches. I know he wants that thousand yards or more. Uh, you know, he wants to top last year's his senior season. And, 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 you know, I just, I just think that uh, he's going to get his time. He's going to get his shot because like you said, there's, there's going to be a time uh, like, you know, last year in the last game of the, uh, of the season in the playoffs, you know, where he rushed for over 300 yards, there's going to be games where we need him to rush for those 300 yards or those 250 yards. But right now, you know, this, this is just going to prepare him for the, the length of the season, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. and, and, and I, and like I said, you know, coach, coach cyber did a really, really good job of, of just, uh, interchanging those backs and, and, and really just seeing what he got. And, uh, you know, I, I think the, the offensive executed really well. Well, Tony, and, and not only that, but I'll add, you know, 
Ace's run for four yards or five yards and then going out of bounds, not taking a hit. That that's big because you know, when, when you're I think he, he he I saw one time I remember I saw the video where he he kind of rolled out and and you he went out of, and he's been doing a really good job of not taking a hit, right? Understanding that hey, look, I, I want to go get 20, but I want to go get 10, get the first down, but here's four. I'm gonna take what they're gonna give me, and then he goes out before you know he's able to take a hit, which I think is is good. So he's understanding too, it seems like, right? That listen, I go get four yards, now we're second and six. And, and like I said, the, 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 I think our offense, the players, especially Ace, right? The more he understands the way Coach Cyber thinks, uh, it's going to be better because we already know, and Coach Cyber has come on and said, look, if it's fourth and two, he's got, I mean, he's not scared to go for it. So instead of going down fourth and six and having to go for it and making it harder, right? Even though we can pass. Hey, you go second and two, you know, you, 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 you go down, then all of a sudden you got a fourth and one, fourth and two. But this type of offense, that's pretty much telling side, I'm going to go for it. You know, he's already said, I got confidence in my offense, so we're going to go. So it's, if you can get three or four yards instead of losing three or four yards, that's a plus. So I saw, I saw Ace doing some of that, taking what the defense was giving them, getting out of bounds and making a second and third and short, right? So if you got third and four, you basically almost got two downs to get four yards. So I think, you know, not only the, the the play on the field, but the mental part of the game, we're starting to understand how this offense is supposed to work. You know, they're, they're understanding what they need to get, you know. And so we're not going to break, you know, all, all the time. But I think having these different players, man, it's going to be hard uh, for teams to, 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 to try to, you know, okay, where, where are they going to go? Because now you got to worry about the pass. And, and, and as a defense, you got, I mean, you're like, okay, we didn't have to worry a couple of years ago about Rockport passing. Now we got to worry about them passing. So, listen, it, it's going to be fun uh, every week to see what these guys, how, how good they're going to get. Uh, but the first week, man, I was very impressed. We'll see what happens on Friday. Yeah, you know, and, 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 and I wouldn't be surprised. You know, I wouldn't be surprised with the length of the season. I think, I think if I counted correctly, I think we got 11 games. Is that right? Does that, that sound right to you, Johnny? I think I counted not, 11 games. Not sure, that, not sure. Okay, well, I, I think I counted 11 games. Uh, you know, we have uh, seven, seven or eight. Uh, I thought it was 10, but okay, maybe 11. Either way, either way. You know, I, I wouldn't be surprised if we have two or three thousand-yard rushers. And, and I think that we have the offensive line to do it. I think if Ace – continues to to you know complete some more passes or just even scramble for a few yards. I think it's gonna really open up that run and, and I wouldn't be surprised if we have two or three uh uh thousand yard rushers uh, uh this year. So you know I'm looking forward to the to the rest of the season. You know, I don't wanna I don't want to jump, you know, too far ahead. I know like Cyber said, we're just worried about next week. We're not worried about that far down the road right now. So I'm just gonna say, you know, it, it, that would just be something exciting to see. You know, so we'll just we'll just have to tune in and 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 watch them and see what happens. So that was the offense. Now we're gonna go to the defense. Johnny, you were a defensive guy back in your days. What what did you see on the defense? What did you like about the defense, or what did you not like about the defense? I like I like what the defense did. They, they pretty well scrambled everywhere. Took care. Of you know, the defensive backs, as we heard from the coach, that they were going to have a field day. Um, obviously, you know, that quarterback went to the air and, you know, we had a few interceptions. I think we had what, two, three interceptions. Um, and we had many opportunities to have other interceptions out there, you know. And uh, it's just the defense line and just McAllister, man, just free all over the field. I mean, he's, you know, he pretty well was the highlight of the game. Um, the team only gave up you know, a hundred yards, pass, hundred to one yards passing. And the scary part about hating what I hated was most of that came off the screens. Um, something that, you know, that's, I noticed that we, that the Reds did to us last year. Uh, they continue doing it to get to us this year. Um, we did make an adjustment. Um, the, that first string did make an adjustment to it toward, you know, as the game went on, uh, you start seeing the, the linemen smelling that, smelling that screen. And that's what led to uh, Matthew Vasquez's interception. You know, he, he, his smart play pretty well had got him his, his touchdown and stuff like that. You know, that's a defense alignment dream. You know, you always see him returning fumbles and stuff like that, but it is a very rare situation where like you have one intercept the ball and return it for a touchdown. And man, I, I felt, 
I, I just thought that was the most accomplished thing over the de- – I mean, most positive thing over the defense, man. It was just adjusting to that screen that was killing us the entire the entire game, you know. Was, he uh, – and speaking of uh, Peyton, you know, he had, he had one assist tackle, six solo tackles, you know, two big hits, three tackles for loss, you know, and that's, that kid just all over the place, you know. Then you had Cole Rios with five solo tackles. Uh, Joe Moreno, man, he's playing that linebacker just as good, you know, with three assists, four solos, a fumble recovery, a pass deflection, two big plays, and a, a tackle for loss, you know. And like I said, Matthew Vasquez with that pinpoint, you know, interception. Um, I think we had, I think, yeah, we had the three interception on on overall the defense. So the defensive backs had had a, a lot of good playing time, you know. Um, it's going to, it's you know, I think them playing against Miller really, really put it, you know, that game right there, that scrimmage right there, I think helped us a lot. You know, those boys were all over the place, scrambling everywhere. Uh, that prepped us for this Aransas game, you know. Um, so these guys, defensive backs, man, were just great. I mean, this is uh, – uh, I hate it that they only played pretty much the first half and that was pretty much it. Um, I like to see a, you know, a huge, huge, big old shutout, you know? I mean, like I said, they only gave up five yards rushing, you know, this whole defense. That is very, very impressive. Gabriel, what, what did, what did you, what did you uh, like about the defense? Or what did you, what did you see that you liked? Well, they, they did exactly what I thought they were going to do. I didn't think Iran is going to be able to do much on, on, on his defense. You know, I, I mean, I thought Rockwell was going to completely shut them down, and they did. I'm, I'm like Johnny. You know, some of the screen plays, you know, they were there. Uh, they dropped some, but they, they were there. Um, and so I was kind of like, okay, what's going on? I'm going to have to fix it. And then like Johnny says, you know, uh, you know they, they made the adjustments. And, you know, we've had Coach Robbins on here before, and so he's got a game plan. You know, us as fans understand we, we expect everything to be shut down. At least I do, right? Okay, well, we gotta shut it, gotta shut it down. But he's got a game plan that he puts together. Uh and, and as the game goes, you know, let, let's see what kind of adjustments we can make. And 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 the guys made the adjustments on defense when they try to do it again and they couldn't get it done. So I, I like what we did to make sure that we didn't give up a big play uh, on 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 the screen play. Uh, you know, Vasquez got the interception, obviously, right place, right time, right. But there were other times that that defense could see that it was coming and they were better prepared. So, you know, hats off. I mean, I think our defense is going to be able to do that. But we have the athletes. We have really good athletes. We got some guys in there that are very smart football players on that defensive on that defensive side of the ball, right? They're very smart. And so I think that's going to come to help us out a lot as we get into district, play these big games, and hopefully make a big playoff push. But Peyton is still learning. Uh, uh, the linebacker spot, right? He, he's still learning. And so we talk about, hey, man, his kid's all over the place. We knew he was going to do that because that's what he does. But he's still learning this early on in this season. I mean, wait wait till you get a couple, wait till you really get, I mean, he's probably feeling comfortable, but wait till he continues to really, you know, get into that groove and okay, now, you know, and I'm feeling more comfortable and stuff. It's going to be, he's going to be a handful. So uh, I, I like, you know, our linebackers. I like our line, linebackers play. I, I think, you know, you know, Peyton being able to free and, and look at and see where he's going. He doesn't always need to make the tackle, but he's going to be around the play. Uh, and, and that helps, you know, it, it gives Moreno and these other guys you know, get in there and make the tackle. And Joe Moreno is a really good, smart football player, right? I mean, this kid plays really good. He, he gives a hundred percent. So, you know, having him on the field there with Krupa and, and, uh, and McAllister is a, is a plus. But the defense did what I thought. There It was no surprise. I thought they were going to shut them out. And they did. I, you know, so I was very impressed uh, with them. Uh, and hopefully this will continue, uh, you know, the next couple of games and, and, and as the season progresses. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and kind of like what I said, kind of like what I said about the comment I made about the offense. You know, this, this was one of those games where I know Coach Robbins, same thing knew that they were going to go spread, knew they were going to try to throw the ball. They probably knew about that screen. You know, it, it just takes the 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 guys on the D line a little bit to to sniff it out. You know, they yeah, this is only game two uh game one. 
you know, we had, and two, we had two scrimmages, but none of the scrimmages they saw that. And, and you know, you got two two young guys on that defensive line, and and uh, so you know, but 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 they they did end up they did end up uh, anticipating that later on in the game. But this, like I said, this is one of those games where Coach Robbins was able to 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 see what he has. You know, you, you hit switching out the corners, switching out the outside linebackers. You know, like like I mentioned earlier, Carson gets hurt, you put another safety back there, and. You know, he, he, you know, the, the, the same, the same depth that they have on offense, they have on defense, you know, they got inter interchangeable players, you know, someone comes out, someone comes back in and they're able to execute, you know, just like, just like the, the last guy, you know what I mean? So the defense, the offense doesn't take a break when we, when, when, you know, when Devin comes off the field or Ricky Franks comes off the field, cause we're putting someone in there, someone else in there, that's going to, going to hold it down on, on, on the corners and, and, you know, same thing in the safety and, and, you know, you, you have guys like, Caleb Smith, you know, you put him in there, you know, on on a, on a few rest plays for for uh you know Aiden or or Krupa and 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 he's going in there and he's causing havoc, you know. So uh you know this is just one of those games where where Coach Robbins gets to see, you know, who who can I put in there in a game situation and 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 who's gonna who's gonna execute and you know everyone did a very good job, you know uh you know the the D line had a, had a little bit of uh. A struggle in the beginning you know sniffing out that screen but then you know look what happens later on in the game you know that they get a touchdown and you know you know that was matthew Vasquez's touchdown but but you know it, when if when i played it was the d-line if if someone on the d-line scored the d-line scored you know what i mean if 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 one of if a db got a got an interception the the db as a team got an interception you know what i mean so uh that you know that's the way i see it so all those guys on the d-line you know they got to be telling each other you know hey I'm, i want to get one now i want to get one for us and and hopefully you know we could see some more some more touchdowns from uh you know from from the defense you know and uh that's another thing we talked about getting deep into the playoffs is you know how well the defense is going to play we know what the offense is going to do we already knew that we knew the offense is going to score points uh, we talked about uh, getting the pass going and, and helping out that offense, but you know, defensively, you know that that's going to be the way we get further and further into the playoffs. You know, really shutting down good good quarterbacks and shutting down good running backs. And and I, I definitely think that Coach Robbins really got a good look at his guys, and uh, you know, he's he's pretty confident in, in what they're going to be able to do. And I and I'm I'm excited to to see what they're going to do uh, the rest of the season. Cause I, I, like I said, you got some young guys uh, mixed in with some, with some tenure guys and, and, and it's a good mix, you know what I mean? So uh, uh, it's going to be exciting to watch them, you know, as, as, as the season progresses. And also, you know, it's turnovers too. These guys are getting turnovers early on and that continues to build confidence. You know, you, you're getting formal recovery. Matthew Vasquez gets that, a return, you know, interception for a team. That's huge. Not only the interception, the interception is huge, but you get a touchdown off of that. This builds his confidence up, you know. So we're getting three, four turnovers. You know, you're seeing them in the scrimmages. You're seeing them here. And this really helps these young guys that are getting them. They're, they're, they, they love it. You know, you know, you get the chain and stuff. So all of this plays a big part. It, it's just a motivation to continue to go out there the next game and do it. So I love early on the turnovers that we're getting. And I look forward to these guys, this defense continuing to get turnovers in, in every game. So we'll, we'll see what happens. But but so far, we're off to a great start. We couldn't have asked for a better start than we got this past Friday. All right. So now let's talk about Johnny's favorite. Let's talk about Johnny's favorite, special teams. I know you can't <laughs> wait to talk about this because – you know, of of course, how the game started, Johnny. What what do you think about special teams? What 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 are your thoughts on special teams and what you saw? You can't start. I mean, it's just incredible. This is this is the way the game the season is going to start. I mean, opening kickoff for a touchdown. That that's that's awesome. I I hate it that I kind of missed the first part of it. I was still kind of <laughs> settling in, you know. And um, before I knew it, he was ready. Like you know on you know on the opposing teams like 45 40 yard line by the time I picked up where the ball was um mm -hmm. but I saw the saw the film and it is it's exciting the kids got pumped and that was just the way to start it off I mean it's mm. you, you can't you can't start a season off any better than that and you know I, I went into this season uh podcast about the special teams and what a way to start it off you know and uh we talked about the kicker um he's he, you know what was he 10 for 11 you know 
that's on a few extra points, you know, it's, and he's, he's making it easily. You know, he's, he's clearly making it easy. I don't know how he missed that 11 for 11, but it, to me on the side, you know, it was, it must've been clearly, you know, to the left a little bit, but um, we, I actually, we never did get a situation to where like we could see his leg on a regular, you know, field goal um, because we're just running all, you know, we're having all those busted plays. We never were in a situation where we have fourth down. Um, you can't, I mean, you know, I, I, I think we only had that one kickoff return. So, you know, I, it, it's hard to go pinpoint the snaps. Um, I like the kickoff team. I mean, everybody's flying out there. Uh, I'm pretty sure they're pretty winded towards the end of the game. Um, but overall, man, it's, we never, I, I don't think we even, did we even punt this game? I, I didn't see a punt. So. I don't remember punting. Yeah, I don't, I don't think so. I think this is just our kicker Chris Wall's uh, show this game, you know, for mm-hmm. special teams, you know. And uh, was it Cole Reels? You know, so basically them two were the basically the, the special teams of the week. All right. Johnny, what, what I mean, uh, Gabriel, what are your thoughts? Well, first of all, it, it's nice to hear the name Reels out there on that Rockford football mm-hmm. It's been a while for me since I've seen. I was accustomed to hearing Reels, you know, for the last, I don't know, five, six years, right? So it was nice to hear uh, that Reels name go out there and do something. Listen, a coach dad was sitting, you know, not what well, just a little ways down from us, you know, and uh, you know, uh, he's got some speed, man. He's fast. I mean, he he's he's fast. Uh, you know, he, he there were there, there was nobody really within like five yards of him. I mean, he there was nobody close to getting this kid. So um, it's exciting. If nobody knew who Cole Reels is, they know now. Um, and so that's how you start this game. Um, and 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 and. and I think it's his first year on varsity, right? And, you know, this is the confidence. This kid's going to get some confidence in him for, for the next week. Uh, and, and, you know, now you've got somebody out there uh, that you know, you know, can do this for you. So um, it's a great way to start. Um, he did some other things th- throughout the game, too. So it's what we talk about when, when we get into these things. Our, our, you know, Johnny always, you know, talks about, how special teams, they play such a big part uh, in a victory or a loss, right? And and, and it's early on, it's showing what our special teams can do, you know, what, what they're able to do uh, to help us win. Hey, listen, our offense struggles in one game, man. A run like this you may, may win us the game, man. So we know we got a guy back there now that's very capable of doing this. So our team better be paying attention. Our, our field goal kicker, you know, I, going into this season, last year when they told me he was a freshman, I, I couldn't believe he was a freshman the way he was kicking. But um, yeah, I think if you're Coach Seibert and, and you got a weapon like that uh, that's very young, I mean, I mean, think about this, guys. Your field goal kicker is a sophomore. We've heard coaches come on. I mean, we've heard Coach Vela, the special teams coach, say, oh, yeah, 45 yards. I got all the confidence in the world that he could make it. Now, will he make it? Well, he's got to kick it right, but I have all the confidence in can. I, I feel the same way. I think you put him out there. I mean, there's a very good chance, you know, he, he, you know, he could make it. Your quarterback's a sophomore playing lights out. I mean, man, the future, right, looks bright. So you, we talked about the offense, we talked about the defense, and then your special teams are starting out the way they're playing. Man, this could be uh, one of the great, you know, our, our special teams to me could be playing such a big role this this year for us um so i'm excited um you know to see what 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 these guys are going to do uh john he brought up you know putting in uh, he wants to see uh, you know kate and kennedy up on the special teams and so what we you know what he could do so imagine putting this guy on there i mean and, and i'm sure coach bella is going to put him up there or he'll be talking uh, you know uh, and making some plans for him because uh so we may see him up there, but imagine the amount of guys that these coaches have this year to be able to move people. That, that's the beauty of, of, of for these coaches is, man, we can just change people. We heard Coach Elizondo say, listen, I, if he's not running the ball, I can put him on defense, you know? I mean, that's awesome to me. If I'm a coach, I'm like, man, get, I, I got four, five. I mean, it's like playing chess. All right, here we go, man. I, you know, I've, I've got it here. I've got guys that I can move around and, this is very exciting for the coaches and the fans. So, yeah, on the special teams part, that's that's we couldn't have started out in the game any better than the way we did. So I'm looking forward 
to Cole Rios uh, doing this again. Uh, you know, not every game. I know he can't do every game, but I'm looking for him to have, you know, run backs and maybe not touchdowns, but he's going to do some damage here. You know, he's going to help us out tremendously uh, in these ball games that we're going to be playing uh, as the season goes. So I'm excited. Yeah. Um, you know, that was definitely a great way to, you know, to start opening, opening season, you know, with that, with that, uh, first play, you know, I don't even know how long it was. It was, uh, what, 80 yards, maybe it was, it was, the. Uh, it was it wasn't deep in the end zone or anything like that, but it was a long touchdown. I mean, just what a way to start. And 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 who's to say if we get another kickoff or we don't run it back again, you know? Uh so it you know, like Gabriel said, I, I think the special teams uh definitely is gonna be is definitely gonna be, you know, one of those things we keep in the back of our pocket, you know, where we could just throw something in there. Uh, to, when, when the offense needs, uh, or when the when the Pirates need to score, you know they're they're able to get it, or when they need that ball back, they're able to get it. And 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 absolutely, I I I think I would like to see. You know, we didn't really need to do that you know, on this last game against Aransas, but I would like to see, uh, Cristobal kick, uh, you know, a long field goal. I, I know last year versus Navasota, we saw him warming up, and he was kicking a you know 40, 45 yards, and 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 looked like we were gonna gonna use him for for uh, at one point, you know, and, and that didn't end up happening, but, you know, I, I think, I think you definitely need to get him in the, in the situation to, to do that, you know, and, and, and cause you know, three points is three points, you know, especially when, when, uh, you know, it's fourth and long and, and, you know, it, you, you know, you, you really need those points, you know? So, you know, I, I, I think, uh, I think I really would like to see what he can do in the game situation. I have seen him kick it, you know, uh, on warmups and, and, uh, you know, just, just, just see what they got. But I mean, uh, special teams did well, you know, uh, we didn't punt, we didn't get to see that, but, uh, we, we kicked off a lot. You know, the guys got down there, they flew to the ball. You, you, you know, you saw Ranzas pass, uh, fair catching it a lot of times because those guys were down the field quick, you know, they, they didn't really have nowhere to go with that. Well, you know, after they caught that ball. So I think special teams did really well. Uh, you know, I can't wait to see, you know, uh, how many, how many more ways Rockport's going to score, you know, get that defensive score, you know, offensive score, you know, scoring on special teams. I mean, it's, it's, it's very, very, it's a very, it was a very, very exciting way to start off the season. Uh, and I, you know, I think the coaches did a really, really good job of coming out here and, and, and with their game plan and then, and then all the kids, you know, putting that work in, you know, uh, and coming out here and executing, you know, they deserve a win like that. We talked about it. We talked about it uh, last week, you know, that, you know, we, we, we needed Rockport needed to, not that we didn't think they were going to win, but they needed to come out here and get a big win because, you know, the last two seasons, you know, they, they kind of struggled early on with the Rams pass in the first half. And, you know, last year was only 26 to zero. And for most teams, they'd love a 26 to zero score, but it just, it just wasn't a, wasn't a, a good enough score for Rockport versus the AP game, you know, and, 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 and we did see, some struggling last year in that first half and, and then they open it up and take, you know, take that win and they, and they shut them out. But, you know, this year they sure did come out and, and, and they played Rockport power football and they executed and it's all about the execution. They executed very well. And, you know, that's the outcome that they got out of it. So, you know, just, just, uh, can't wait to see what else the special teams, uh, has, uh, in store for us this season. I know Coach Vela will do some interesting things and, uh, you know, different situations and, and, you know, I just can't wait to see that. So, uh, that concludes the breakdown of the Ranzas pass. Did I miss anything? Ranzas pass, uh, Rockport game. Now let's talk about this week coming up. Let's talk about Friday. We got Rockport going down to Corpus to play CC King. Uh, I think they lost last week, uh, in a close one, uh, to San Antonio, a San Antonio team. I can't remember Lynn Clare or something like that. I don't know if I said that right. Uh, Lanier. Lanier. Yeah. Lanier. Lanier. Okay. So they, they, they play San, San Antonio Lanier and they lost, uh, I not think I'm bad. saying you're right. <laughs> so anyway, so King, you know, we talked about King, uh, yes, you know, yesterday when we, when we did our predictions and, and you know, King's in a tough district, you know, they they got to play Vets Memorial. They got to play Flower Bluff. 
you know, Mo Moody's, you know, you never know how good they're going to be, but sometimes they're good, sometimes they're not. I think they're going to have a good team this year. They had a big win last week. Uh, you got Ray, uh, you know, they, they, they're they in a tough district. So, you know, it's hard to tell how good King is actually going to be. And, and, you know, we never we never faced them before. So uh, let's talk about that game next. Johnny, what, what are your thoughts uh, on the Rockport uh, versus King game? What, 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 what do you think? We, what do you think has to happen? Uh, defensively for Rockport and offensively for Rockport to to go in there and beat King and then who do you, I mean I know you think Rockport's going to win but why do you think that? I think uh, Rockport's going to win because the the, the solid uh, ground game that we had this past game and pretty much that's our bread and butter. Um, Lanier Lanier on King had two hundred yards rushing on him, uh, so I, I I think I think we will have a big performance on the ground again. Um, just be going on that. King not scoring so many points last week is showing us that I think our defense could have another shutout. Um, I I don't see this game being such a great. I, I don't think uh, many people are saying that this could be a big closer game because they're a bigger school. But hey, we already scrimmaged two game two big schools there in Buck Stadium. So it's basically like Buck Stadium's our hometown, our home stadium right now this year. Uh, you know, it'd be our third game over there already. So I think the momentum is a lot towards us. And I think we're we pretty much going to, you know, hopefully we have another big special team game, you know, so we'll see. All right. Gabriel, what are your thoughts? Uh, I'm pretty much with Johnny. I think we're going to have a big run game. Um, I think uh, Coach Cybert, you know, he's still going to, I think, in the past. But but I think I think King's going to struggle with with with. Uh, stopping uh, um, our run game. So I, I expect us to have a huge night uh, on, on you know, running the ball. Um, they do have, I saw, I think, a back that's that's pretty decent, pretty good down there in King. Uh, I think the uh, same running back they had last year. You know, King, they've improved. Uh, this, this coach of theirs, I, I don't think this is his first year, but he's fairly new uh, here. Um, I think maybe second, third year, something like that. I think somewhere around there. But um, I, I think they're better this year than they have been the last couple of years. So even though I still think Rockport will beat them, I, I think King's going to compete. They're going to be more competitive this year. And that, 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 you know, people aren't just going to be wiping these guys out. I think they're going to be more competitive. Um, but these the Rockport's been running this system for a while. These guys that are seniors ha have been in this program for, for a long time, you know, so um, they know what they're doing. And we talked about last week, how, how they, how they look, they just look like a well-oiled machine, right? They just, they just look like getting whatever they wanted. So even though I think King will be a tough, a just, uh, they'll be a tougher than Aransas, uh, but I still think Rockport's going to dominate them. I, I don't think it'll be a 76, obviously, but, but they're, they're, they're going to score some, some points. I, 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 and I think Rockport, I should come out with this victory, at least two uh, uh, touchdowns plus, I, I think, uh, for Rockport. But, yeah, I think they're going to have a big, big uh, game. Uh, our run game is going to be going to be huge. Yeah, uh, absolutely. I, I think I think Rockport's run game is going to be huge. But, again, you know, like I said, you know, I would like to see uh, Ace, you know, get some more completions in. And I, I think when other teams start to see that, I mean, in the – these uh preseason games when other teams start to see oh man ace ace has already got you know three four five hundred yards on the season and the and only three games i think that makes that makes other teams rethink how they're going to defend against us you know what i mean because they already know that we have a running game they know rockport's coming with the running game but you know we use these three games to just just to get ace up there in in in, in yards and i you know i think he's at like 116 120 something like that right now if we get them a hundred yards a game going into the regulars uh, to district, you know, you know, def uh, coaches are going to think, man, you know, th this this quarterback might be doing something over here. We might have to second think the way we go and defend against that team. And when you get other other uh, other uh, programs to start trying to change their their defense, you know, you know, after three or four games, five games, you know, it really throws off, you know, their their. Uh, uh, you know what they've been what they've been working on you know so I I, I don't know I, I would like to see that I would like to see some more passes from Ace I think this is like another one of those games kind of like a Ranzis. now I'm not I'm not gonna I'm not taking King lightly I mean King is a is a is a big 5A school 5A division one 
and the team that they played, they were four and two last year, three and zero in district, and they went to the playoffs. So, you know, this th- not like it's not like they they lost to a, to a, a no name team. I mean, that what was it, thirteen to twelve is what I think I saw the score, thirteen twelve. They, I mean, they 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 lost by one point to a team that won district last year in their five A division one district in San Antonio, and and went to the playoffs. So, uh, you know that. King King that King's not to be taken lightly, but I think it's I, I do think it's still one of those games where uh you know the 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 D line's gonna face some bigger guys you know it's kind of like Miller they're gonna face some bigger guys and and I think they need that you know I I think they need that to to you know to help uh, uh boost their physicality on the line you know and 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 uh you know I, I think their quarterback's gonna try to throw the ball King's always been a passing team you know uh. They've always, you know, for some for some reason or another, they usually have a quarterback you got to watch out for, and, and uh, you know, so they're gonna throw the ball, and you know, it gives our our DBs uh, some. They're gonna have some more uh, practice, and and I think that's what they need. I think they need to play a team that that we haven't seen, and uh, you know, the coaches are gonna are gonna learn some things about their team, and 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 you know, if they go out there and play and execute. And not think about anything else, you know. Take the five A out of the out of the equation. If you just go out there and execute like you did last week, I think that they're going to do great things. I think they are, and and uh, you know we can't get psyched psyched out about you know being you know a five A team. But like I said, we can't. King is definitely not to be taken lightly. They barely lost to a team that won district last year, so you know I can't wait to see what happens. Uh, but you know we'll have to uh, wait and see. Uh, but you know, the, the, those are my thoughts. I, th- I think that I think that uh, I would like to see uh, Ace throw the ball some more, and, and and like I said, get his yards up, so that when we're going to district play, it really gets other coaches to think about how they got to defend us. But you know, definitely the run game uh, is going to be a factor. So that's what I got. So that's what I have on the um, the uh, Rockport versus King game. We already broke down the Rams' pass game. Uh, do y'all have any more thing? Uh, anything else to talk about about the about the two games about either the Rams' pass breakdown or the King game before we move on to? I think Johnny's gonna share the scores uh, from the volleyball next. But before we go on to that, does, does do y'all have any more uh, any last thoughts on the on the football? I got, uh, no. I got some of- oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead no, no, I was gonna say something about the volleyball. Go ahead. Uh, I do. I do got a little things uh, with football, the expansion on football and stuff like that. I know this is the the part podcast, uh, but I like to I like to keep it a form as far as uh, what uh, what the the other district is going, how they're doing in our own district. Uh, so I'm gonna run down the scores on our district's games last week uh, with a uh, real Hondo beating uh, Quadis Lincoln sixty five to zero, Port Isabel fifty four to six over Saint Joseph Academy, Ingleside fifteen or ten over Mathis. Sitting the 57 to 12 of Orange Grove. Robstown's lost to uh, Kingsville 28 to 7. West Stoso, you know, that's the 35 to 20 against Odom. And then the Raymondville 44 26 loss against uh, La Feria. Um, going by this, guys, uh, some of these scores are pretty well up there. Um, <laughs> it could be some adjustments going on here pretty soon. Uh, I'm not too certain about Raymondville now. Uh, they did play a big old 5A school, uh, but the same 5A school that lost against Miller 77 last year. So, you know, it's 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 pretty good district. Uh, I like to see the outcome as we go, uh, keeping up and stuff like that. And I also like to throw out some uh, uh, some games in our next, uh, if we make the playoffs, uh, some of the teams that we face uh, in the next district that I like to mention. Uh, such as uh, the way I saw the bracket on the, the UIL uh, website, uh, we'll be playing the District 15 uh, district, uh, which Carrizo Springs beat o- Uvalde 30 to 0, Divine beating Highlands 57 to 31, Pearsall losing to Burbank 17 to 7, Hondo losing to San Antonio Memorial 33 23, Crystal City losing to Win 37 to 4, and Bandera losing to Poteet 39 to 15. Um, this is a kind of like where I'm going to kind of break down a little bit. I'm not going to list all the gate teams, but as the district goes on, I'll be listing like the four top teams in that district. Um, cause after a while you did, they'll start separating, uh, you know, we have the, the well-known district 13 
with Davos Soda's 49 to 0 over Wharton, Smithville 42 to 0 over Cedar Creek, Quarrel 62 to 7 over Lavernia. Huge. LaGrange 35 29 over Rockdale, Giddings 49 to 0 over Belleville, and Gonzalez 56 34 loss against El Campo. Actually, Giddings lost to Belleville. Um, the, the one district that I, 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 I always look back on is the District 14 district. This is with the Wimberley and Navarro. Um, that's, you know, those two teams always battle out it. You know, I think they always battle that because there is, I'm going to say it straight up right here, there is no competition in that district. Uh, basically, it's Wimberley and Navarro every year. Um, Wimberley over Canyon Lake, 20 to 3. Navarro did lose against Port Lavaca, 33 28. But this is where, the non-competition, I'm just going to throw it out there with it. Uh, you got the Young Man's Leadership Academy with a 49-7 to loss against Randolph. Austin Archie, 49-0 to loss against John Paul. Maynard, a 54-0 to loss against Caldwell. And each side, Memorial, don't even have a schedule up right now. Um, that's, I'm just going to say that out loud. You know, it's it's, it's not, a, not a great competitive district. Uh, if you threw West Oso, Robstown in there, Hey, they'll, they'll probably be winning that district. You know, I don't want to say winning, but they'll be getting the playoffs in that district easily. Um, some of the – I'd also like to throw out some uh, some uh, top-ranked state rankings out there um, in different regions, not necessarily the one, two, three, four, uh, but they kind of fall that way almost. Uh, Carthage, of course, the number one team uh, out of the Region 3, Winning 24 is 27 24 over Crosby. Out of the region two, you got Gilmore, uh, 42 to 14 over Whitewater. The region three, you have Wimberley. I mean, region four, you have Wimberley, 20 to three over Canyon Lake. And the region one is Selena, which is the number five team in the state, 34 to 13 over Melissa. Um, again, I'm not going to go break down so many games after that. Uh, pretty much, I'll be through the top four. Of each district, uh, but this is kind of like where I go want to close it out with every podcast on this. And absolutely, on to the volleyball. Um, the girls had a an off week, you could say. Um, they went down on a little slump. Uh, these girls are still out there. You know, they're 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 doing great. They're still as of this Monday. I do you rankings? Uh, they're still at the number nine spot. Uh, in the state ranking, so you know, so they're still getting a little recognition. <laughs> they did lose against uh St. Joseph two games to zero, they had another loss against Calhoun two games to one. Uh, they did beat Poteet two games to zero, they beat Sitton, which is what they really, really are shooting for in the district, two games to zero. Uh, Goliad they lost two to one, Columbus they lost two games to zero. And the latest, latest game they lost against Cal in three games to zero. Now, we might not think about Cal not being a great team, but uh, and far as volleyball is concerned, the, the, the districts and the playoff brackets are a little different. Uh, they go back as far as the softball thing. So, like, Cal is considered pretty much the 4A team in volleyball. Uh, so, again, this is kind of like how the volleyball, the bat softball team goes is uh, the brackets are broken up differently. Uh, so basically the TM, the Callens, you know, they will be playing each other in the playoffs later on, you know, once, if whoever gets in. Um, so this is the a lineup of the district of the volleyball is uh, Beeville, Miller, West Oso, Ingleside, Calhoun, and Sitton. Now, right now, Mr. Uh, West Oso, they're having a great season at the volleyball season over there. They're 15 and nine. You know, so they're, they're, they're going great. We're sitting, we're sitting at 14 and eight. They're sitting at 15 and nine uh, against preseason. A lot of these teams don't record their wins and losses. Uh, West, instead of being sitting in Rockport, it could be West Coast or Rockport at the top. You know, so it could be go. first against <laughs> Mr. The Mr. Bears. Man. The Bears. <laughs> uh, so they're all coming to games. They got Skidmore coming this Friday. Uh, again, they only got a record, a showing two and three. Uh, next Tuesday, they got a home game against Bishops, who are six and two. Uh, those are your upcoming games. But we're coming up to the district. Um, they only got three, three non, three uh, preseason games left. You know, it's Kingsville after the Bishop game, and after that, 
they start off with Calhoun to the first district game of the season. So, hey, there it's time to the for them to clean up. You know, this is they went two and two and one, two, three, four, five, two and five this past week. And so, uh, hopefully, they they turn it on and do a little better. You know, so they already lost against Calhoun earlier in the week. You know, two games to one. You know, last week. So uh, that's something that's gonna like hunt them. You know, they're gonna want that first district win against Borlavaca. So uh, that's a little bit about the, so- the volleyball team this year. Do Do you know if that's a home game or is that a away game? Uh, Calhoun game. That yeah, it'll be a home game. It'll be on September fourteenth. Okay, so. So I, I know we had the girls on here a uh, couple of weeks ago, and and just for everyone who's watching, you know the, the girls are going to open up district at home. You know they 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 said that they feel the energy from the stands. So let's let's go in there and let's pack the gym. Let's let's show the girls that 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 the town is behind them, so they get that first win. You know, starting off district with the win would just be great a great momentum going into the rest of the to the rest of the season for the girls. So. You know, if you're watching, you know, September, September what? September 14th. September 14th. Let's pack the gym and let's and let's let's go there and support those girls because, uh, you know, uh, you know, we already said they're going to win district. So we got to go out there and, and, and give them our support. So, uh, you know, I, I know I know I know that I know they're going to bounce back from this this past week uh, and, and, and I know they're going to come out here and, and, and get some big wins for us. So, you know, I just, you know. You just got to go out there and support them, just like we do the football. We need to go out there and pack that gym. It's a beautiful gym. Let's fill up those seats. Gabriel, you got anything to add with the volleyball? Uh, yeah, just that um, next Wednesday here on the Pirates Cove, uh, we're going to have uh, two of the – we've already had head coach Mark Jeffrey on. Um, so this upcoming uh, Wednesday, next Wednesday, here on the Pirates Cove, we're going to have Coach Robbins, uh, Amanda Robbins, uh, and uh, I still got to send out the invite, but we're also going to invite uh, Coach uh, Clark. Uh, they're both assistants to Mark um, Jeffrey. And so bringing them in next week is going to be great. We can talk to them. I know the guys, you guys are going to have, I'm going to have questions uh, for the ladies. It's not also just knowing and talking to them about what our varsity uh, players are doing, but they can also, uh, we'll also be talking about um, the JV and the freshmen. I've got questions for them as far as, you know, the players and, and what they see coming up and how well they're doing. I, I, you know, I know that the freshmen has struggled a little this week. I really didn't stay up with them. Um, hopefully I'll, I'll feel better and get back uh, with the JV and the freshmen uh, next week. But one of the things I think <clears throat> that I like with Coach Clark is her experience. I mean, she's ran this program for a long time here in Rockport before, you know, she stepped down and, and, and Coach Jeffrey's been up. So when you have her as a freshman, and we heard uh, Coach Jeffries talk about, you know, how blessed he was to have uh, Coach uh, uh, Clark, you know, helping his freshman because these these girls come from junior high to high school, so they have that a coach like that who's who's been a varsity coach, I think, in my opinion, and and has had success because she's had success here at Rockport. I think really helps our our, our girls, you know, getting them better. Uh, and, and getting them prepared, you know, for, for the JV and into the varsity. So, and then, and then, you know, you hear Coach Jeffrey say about uh, Coach Robbins' record. You know, she's won a lot, I think, a lot more times. I would actually like to ask her and see if anybody's got a record since she started uh, here coaching the JV. What's her actual record win loss? Because I, you know, the way I understand it is she's only lost a few. Uh, so it'd be really nice if we could come up. And find that out, uh, and 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 you know, and mention it here um, on uh, the Pirates Code because I think that's the way I heard Coach Jeffries talk about that. That's awesome to be here seven, eight years, something like that, and, and just lose a few, a few. I think was it set matches, something like that. He said something like that. Uh, I think is amazing. So they'll be on next Wednesday. Uh, here on the Pirates Cove, we'll be talking volleyball. So, you know, tune in. Uh, we'll have some questions for them. And then, of course, they're going to be talking about, you know, the 2021 volleyball, the freshman JV and varsity. So tune in. It's going to be really excited. We set it up right around this time to talk to them right before district starts. And so tune in. Uh, it should be lots of fun. And then Tuesday, this uh, upcoming Tuesday, uh, we'll have a, a, a kind of like a special edition of the Pirates Cove on Tuesday. And, uh, Tune in because we're going to be talking uh, football, but we're going to be talking uh, Rock uh, Rockport 14 Youth Football. We're going to have Coach Ronald Leva. He's the president of our Rockport 14 
youth program. So he's going to come on. I'm going to reach out to him tomorrow to see if he's going to bring any of the coaches so we can have questions for them. But he's going to talk about the program uh, and, and you know what's going on with our youth program. Because I'll tell you guys, it, it starts here with these guys. It doesn't start in middle school. It starts with what Coach Lay was doing and, and all of his coaches down there at the youth. And so we also want to be covering them this season. So he'll be on uh, Tuesday and, and we'll be talking uh, Rockport youth football uh, football and we'll be talking about you know the divisions how many teams we got I don't know uh, how that's going it's been a while since I've been part of the youth program uh and so he's going to be talking and we're going to have questions about this so tune into that uh it's going to be really exciting like I said we're going to be covering our youth program as well so just wanted to throw that out there guys we're going to have a busy week next week so that's that's I think that's all we have for uh this this episode of the Pirates Code. Again, like I said, you know, uh let, let's go out there and 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 pack the gym for those girls and Friday night when Friday night comes around, let's let's go to Corpus Christi, let's have a big show, and let's fill those stands up and cheer on those boys cuz I tell you what, like I said, they're going to have a they're going to have a a game against a team that's going to show them a little bit more competition than, than we saw in week one. So we really need to go out there and support, support our Rockport Fulton Pirates. So they get that win. Uh, Tony, real quick. Uh, so, but the freshmen and JV play here tomorrow night, correct? Uh, yes, they should. Okay. Just, you know, uh, uh, the JV, I, I think they're, they won last week. Our, our freshman team, uh, did, uh, they, they took the loss. Uh, so come on out uh, um, and, uh, and and come and support our Rockport Fulton uh, uh, freshman, Rockport Fulton Pirate freshman and, and uh, junior varsity team, football teams. They'll be playing uh, uh, here at home tomorrow. I think it's. 5.30 and 7, I think. The first game starts at 5 or 5.30, and then, of course, JV at 7. So come on out if you're not doing anything. Watch some good football. Uh, I anticipate that both of our teams uh, are going to win tomorrow, and that's just going to lead and roll over to our varsity. So come on out and, and, and watch our boys support our freshmen in JV as they take on. I think, they take, I think they're taking on King uh, yeah. here at home tomorrow. So come on out. Show some support uh, and and good luck uh, to our our our, J, our freshmen in JV uh, uh, tomorrow. Let's get the win, guys, and let's continue. Let's get that rolling. Let's get that W, uh, and and let's just keep it rolling all season. I'm gonna tell you guys, I like our freshman team. I know they didn't win that first week, but I, I like what I saw in the scrimmages. Um, not sure exactly what happened in the first game, but but they're gonna fix it. I'm anticipating that they're going to get that win and, and the JV had an impressive win and, and I think they're going to continue because JV won. Does anybody know what the JV score was last week against Aransas? I heard it was really it was, bad. It was like 60 to zero, I think. I think it was 60 yeah. to zero. Yeah. So come on out and and, and, and support these guys are freshmen and JV teams. They're, they're really good this year. Uh, and so, you know, pack those stands, man. And, you know, and uh, we'll be talking about these teams. Hopefully, I'll, I'll be better next week. I'm feeling better, and definitely we'll be breaking down not only the varsity but the freshmen and JV. So, if there's nothing else, guys. Tony, thank you very much. Man. I'm still I talk too much, man, and then I start coughing, and man, I start choking up. So I'm still trying to get rid of this stuff, man. And not only that, man, but I'm on. I don't take medication, number one. And this last week, I've been taking vitamins and medication, so I'm all medicated, and, and so I'm not really feeling it, you know. And uh, so I'm hoping that by next week, man, I'll get this cough under control, man. But uh, thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Have a great night, and I'll see you guys. Um, I don't know if I'm going to be at the game on Friday. I'll let you guys know. I'll send you a message by tomorrow evening. Hopefully, I'll be able to be there uh, to uh, live stream it. But if not, I'll see you guys on Monday. All righty, man. Have a good night. Peace out.